this thing, well, it sucks. Welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about the newest rocket launcher added into Battlefield 2042, the Predator SRAW. This weapon hails from Battlefield 2 and 4 fame for being a super solid rocket launcher that guides itself to where you point your crosshair. And in those games, Battlefield 4 especially, it was really fun to use. In this game, on the other hand, well, to say they fucked it up would be putting it very lightly. And on my end, it's honestly really funny because initially when I heard they were adding the straw in, I was really worried. As someone who enjoys using flying vehicles and already understands the sheer power of the TV missile, I was like, if they're putting in another rocket launcher and this one doesn't have unlimited ammo, it's probably gonna be OP as shit, be really frustrating, and just generally be a nuisance. And I couldn't have been more wrong. And I'm kind of upset that I couldn't have been more wrong because the straw is just completely useless. And that's not an exaggeration. This is the worst rocket in the game by a significant margin. Let's ignore the whole wire guided property of this right off the bat and just talk stats. All of the data that I'm gonna be referencing is going to be taking into consideration that you're using Crawford with this rocket launcher because, well, Boris is completely useless sad. and people who use him are bad. Sorry, not sorry. And having that extra rocket is integral to playing the engineer class. So just as a general rule of thumb, I'm using Crawford. Anyways, the SRA starts you off with three rockets. Already off to a pretty rough start. With those three rockets, you can deal 27 damage to the side of a tank. Considering the three rocket total, that ends you at 81 total available damage on the straw, meaning that with this rocket launcher, you are physically incapable of destroying a tank by yourself with just the rocket launcher alone. In terms of the reload time, it takes five seconds to reload the straw and fire another shot. Now moving over to the recoilless M5, this rocket launcher has four rockets, one more than the straw. It also does 27 damage, identical to the straw, but because of the extra rockets, you can do 108 total damage to a tank, being able to solo a tank by yourself if you hit all of your rockets and they don't block any. Once again, identical to the straw is a five second reload. I think you're probably starting to see the problem. The RPG, my personal rocket of choice if I'm playing anything other than Liss, which itself is a bit of a rarity, you get three rockets just like with the SRA. But unlike the SRA, the RPG deals 35 damage for a 105 total, which is a little bit less than the recoilless, but you need to hit the tank with less rockets total, which generally speaking is what you want to be doing. Sharing the reload time of the previous two with five seconds puts the RPG at basically the highest DPS available. Finally, the TV missile, you start with two rockets, but you technically have unlimited because it recharges over time. Those rockets do 27 damage, identical to the recoilless M5 and the SRAW, for 54 total damage in one sitting, but obviously they come back. So it's technically unlimited with a bit of an asterisk. But regardless of all of that, the point is that the SRAW statistically is the worst rocket launcher in the game. Like just flat out, it's the worst. But some of you might be saying, well, Eclipse, the reason that the straw is the worst statistically is because it's wire guided. And so it means that you're not likely to miss your shots and you can turn the rocket in midair, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so let's talk about that guiding part, shall we? Well, to put it bluntly, if you're fighting against ground vehicles, all of the rocket launchers have extremely fast travel times. So if you're missing rockets on anything that isn't maybe the ram, that's just a skill issue, I don't know what else to tell you. That just flat out shouldn't happen. So I suppose technically the SRA is good at sitting on a hill eight miles away, sniping at tanks, but even then you can't kill the tank because you don't have enough rockets. So, well, I don't know. But I know what you're all saying. You're saying Eclipse, the real point of the SRA is to meme on air vehicles. Well, now we're gonna get into exactly why trying to hit air vehicles with this is just a waste of your time. And what it ends up coming down to is that the amount of skill required to take out air vehicles with this is so disproportionate to just using TV missiles that again, it's just completely worthless. Number one, and one of the biggest issues hands down is DICE in their infinite wisdom decided to make it so that way this rocket launcher had like a 5X zoom or a 4X zoom attached to it. Good God, why? 
This means that if anything is even remotely close to you that you're trying to fire at, you literally cannot see it in your peripherals to try to guide the rocket to it. Using this rocket launcher is unironically just guesswork. And if you're just gonna be doing guesswork anyway, then why wouldn't you just use a different rocket that has better stats? This whole zoom thing makes absolutely no sense. And it's not even just close range, even at far range. You need to literally have the rocket outside of your view a lot of the time in order to guide it on target, which is just horrible. Sometimes while I was using it, I felt like people might just feel bad for me because there were several times where I was trying to shoot them with the rocket and they were like, here, let me just give it to you, man. And they just commit suicide. Because I suppose watching me flounder around with this terrible rocket launcher trying to hit them while they can't hit me either made them so embarrassed and felt so bad for me that death was the better alternative. The other major massive issue that just makes me scratch my head and like I have no words for is the fact that DICE decided that the straw was going to be too OP. So they added a visual and audio feedback to the rocket, meaning that when pilots hear it coming, they can just move out of the way. You should be seeing two clips on screen right about now. The first is going to be the sound that you hear when the rocket is fired at you, which is very similar to that of the TV missile, which people are used to hearing and used to avoiding. And the second is this big ass red diamond that comes up whenever someone fires this. As far as I can tell, you can see the red diamond no matter where you are on the entire map. How did that get through testing? How? When someone fires a TV missile at you, they don't see a big red diamond coming towards them. Sure, they can see the missile itself, but at least if it's coming from behind the person, all they have to rely on is the audio feedback. With this, you see the diamond show up in the corner of your screen, and you're like, well, someone's firing a straw at me, time to do some evasives. And once again, unlike the TV missile, trying to course correct if someone's trying to avoid your rocket is a lost cause. You're not, it's not gonna happen. If someone's trying to avoid a straw, give up. You've lost already. On a bit of a more minor note, the rockets also tended to have random heart attacks while I was firing them, probably because either something quickly entered the view of the camera, or I have no idea. I only caught one of these on camera, but I mean, just look at it. How did that happen? I have no idea. And I also had a bug, which I didn't get footage of, but happened a few times, and I don't know why it happens, where I would fire it, and I'd be holding right-click to zoom, and it would just unzoom me and start reloading the rocket and then I couldn't turn it, and that is a very large problem, obviously. And you know what the worst part about all of these things is? Is that Battlefield 4 Straw had literally none of these problems. They had the perfect template and still managed to fuck it up. Battlefield 4 Straw did comparatively less damage than the rest of the rocket launchers, but it reloaded faster than them to try to make up for it, on top of the fact that there was no huge obvious warning when you were about to get hit by one. And that was balanced out by the fact that while it did a ton of damage to helicopters, attack helicopters in particular, it didn't outright one-shot kill them. Now, I do feel like it should have one-shot killed them, as the attack helicopter in BF4 is, well... It's a problem, but regardless, they had the template and they just didn't use it, I guess. I'm not sure. As a bit of a final note on Sora problems, just like the one from BF4 and the tow missile in this game, when it first fires out, it's very slow and then it speeds up, which makes hitting close range targets, once again, even harder than it has to be. At the end of the day, and this is not an exaggeration, I promise you, there were several times, and you'll be seeing them on screen, where I just said fuck it, and I pulled out a railgun after shooting several rockets at helicopters and killed the guy out of the helicopter with more success than blowing them up with the rocket launcher. What the fuck? The railgun gives you 140 tries and actually relies on consistency and skill instead of guesswork. Oh, and it also doesn't play a huge loud sound and give people a big red icon while you're shooting at them with it. Who would have guessed? If you're looking to just destroy a singular ground vehicle by yourself, your best bet has a general tendency to be using free fire rocket launchers with the AP grenade launcher. That way you have easily enough damage to destroy a tank as long as it's not being actively repaired. And on top of that, if helicopters get too close for comfort, you can always shoot them down with your free fire rocket launcher if you're good enough or if you're lucky enough. And considering the SRA might as well be luck based, 
and the Free Fire rocket launchers are luck-based, well, the choice is obvious. At times, it felt like using a repair tool would just be better than trying to use the SRAW. But the real kick in the balls when it comes to the SRA is 1000%, well, the TV missiles. It's LIS. I don't think this is an unpopular opinion by the upper echelon of players in 2042, but LIS is the best engineer, just bar none. The fact that you're able to run a rocket launcher and C5 is absolutely massive because it means that you can solo vehicles by yourself with the C5, as well as be able to do half of a vehicle's health with your TV missiles, which are always coming back. So you don't need to rely on ammo, which trying to get ammo from a Battlefield player is like trying to get blood from a stone. So that's usually a bit of a lost cause if you're not directly playing with friends who can give you ammo. On top of that, the TV missile is hands down the best thing at destroying air vehicles because unlike the SRA, you don't need any line of sight. Unlike the SRA, you have technically unlimited attempts to try it. And unlike the SRA, if someone is trying to avoid your rocket, you can adjust accordingly. So it becomes a bit of a mind game on which way the helicopter is going to dodge and how much. And if you get good enough with the TV missile, you can start to predict those things, especially when trying to take into consideration how the enemy is flying and how they've dodged the last time. The SRA, on the other hand, well, it's it, like I said, it's RNG. And sure, the SRA can one-shot attack helicopters, but a savvy player is just going to take a railgun, shoot the helicopter enough to the point where it gets one shot by a TV missile, and then TV missile it. You get the same result. Or, let me fix that. You get the better result because you actually kill the helicopter instead of just firing three rockets at it and then giving up because the rocket is ass. Before I conclude today's video, I want to talk about what I would do to the SRA, because I actually think it could be an interesting choice that you have to make in the game when it comes to rockets, rather than the dumpster fire it is right now. Number one is that the zoom needs to be lowered to a 1x, just like it was in Battlefield 4. I don't know how this 4x got greenlit, but it's gotta go, because it makes using it borderline impossible. Number two, the visual and audio feedback needs to go. It's already easy enough to dodge these missiles if you see them coming at you. It absolutely does not need a giant red diamond on top of an audio cue, so that way pilots can just avoid them for free. It's stupid, it makes no sense, and it shouldn't be there. And finally, I think that this rocket needs to reload the fastest out of all of the rocket launchers. You don't have enough rockets in order to one-shot a tank. And the way that you reload the straw is literally throwing it on the ground and pulling out another one. That shouldn't take five seconds. This could be a really interesting rocket launcher if all those changes were implemented, but in truth, I know they won't be, and this is just going to remain garbage for the rest of the life cycle of the game, which admittedly is probably not going to be for very much longer. And well, that's the video. I don't have anything else to say on the topic. I know this video is going to massively underperform because a lot of my audience is from my main channel and the other audience is from Tarkov, so me talking about Battlefield 2042 is kind of a lost cause, but I felt strongly about the topic, so I just felt inclined to make a video. With that though, I am done. So if you enjoyed the video, you can leave a like and subscribe. If you didn't, don't. And with all that being said, have a wonderful day and night wherever you are, and see you guys next time.